Hello everybody, welcome back to I Dream of Indie. All Gamer Joe here, and today we are reviewing Red Wings Aces of the Sky, which was just recently released on the Nintendo Switch. This game will also be coming to Steam at a later date along with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. It is an arcade-style flight action game that comes from developer and publisher All In Games. I'll be honest with you, it's been a while since I've played a flight game, not typically my genre, though I do enjoy it from time to time, and Red Wings really did manage to scratch an itch that I didn't even realize I was itching for. I guess we'll get the slightly disappointing part out of the way. There's only really two modes in this game, a story mode, though it does consist of two different campaigns, which I thought was a nice touch, and a survival mode, which is basically battling wave after wave of enemies. As you probably could have guessed, this is a story about different wars and battles, and it's told through some really nice looking comic strips between sections of the main campaign. For anyone who's played a flight game before, the controls will feel pretty familiar, but there are probably a few differences here or there. Again, it's been a while since I've personally played one. Movement is on the left stick, and also the right stick acts as your acceleration, so moving it all the way up will increase your speed, but pulling it back down will slow you down. As you take damage or run low on fuel, which is indicated by a beeping sound, you'll have to fly through different rings in order to restore them. Thankfully, the game has a pretty nice map system in the lower left of the screen, which indicates where the rings are located, as well as where enemy fire is coming from and where the enemies themselves are. You're also able to do barrel rolls in this game, or other fun skills can be unlocked and upgraded, such as the quick turnaround, and you'll earn more stars which can be spent for these skills based on how well you do in a level, whether that be your timing was good, or if you just didn't take a lot of damage. Perhaps the most fun of the abilities in this game is the Fatal Takedown, which can be used when an enemy warfighter is low on health. With just a push of the X button, you will enter an animation that is really amusing and will gun down your enemy in stylistic fashion. Of course, you can't just spam out skills in this game, you will have to wait for a recharge to complete before you can use that skill again, but I will say that on the whole I felt like the controls were really smooth and responsive in this game. For me, who again hasn't played one of these types of games in a long time, it was easy enough for me to pick up and play, learn, and get right into the action. Throughout the various missions, a lot of them will revolve around you simply taking out enemies, but they do switch things up a bit from time to time, including fun bomber missions which will have you dropping giant bombs down on bridges in order to destroy them. So there's enough different between the levels whereas things don't get monotonous, and I have to say it's really nice that there is a co-op option in this game. I did test it out, though I didn't have a partner, I just wanted to kind of see how things ran for you all. And while the graphics here on the Nintendo Switch version definitely took a hit, it was still a relatively smooth experience in terms of frame rate and playability, making this a pretty attractive co-op campaign experience, a feature that I miss in a lot of games. And with 50 missions that you can experience with a friend or on your own if you would that take place through the World War I era, I really did think it was a well put together campaign with enough variety to keep you entertained for quite a few hours. Outside of that, there is a bunch of planes for you to unlock as well, all of which have their own statistics. And sure, it's fair to say that there aren't a lot of modes in this game, but it's also worth noting that the survival mode is really replayable, especially if you play it with a friend. I enjoy taking on wave after wave of enemies, and because the game is so responsive and feels good, it never really gets old. Graphically, I think the Switch version actually looks pretty good and performs admirably. It's nearing 60 frames per second anyways, sometimes it does dip here or there. But the various different models of airplanes that you can choose from in this game are all well detailed and do look out of that era. I think that the stages look nice too, with some wonderful skies that are full of color, and there's also some nice weather effects with rain. It's not a graphical showcase by any means, but it's a simplistic look that does work effectively for the game they've created. The soundtrack and sound design overall is actually pretty good in this game as well. Sounds really right out of that era, and I really did enjoy the menu music which you can hear in this review right now. The sounds of airplanes and bullets whizzing by you is always satisfying and definitely well done. Red Wings Aces of the Sky is a really well-made product that looks good and plays even better. While I do wish it had a few more modes of play, it's still an exciting game to blast through either alone or with a friend. I highly recommend this game to fans of flight combat games in particular. Instead of getting caught in a tailspin, Red Wings Aces of the Sky soars brilliantly on the Nintendo Switch. We hope that you enjoyed our review of Red Wings Aces of the Sky today. If you did, please do consider hitting the subscribe button below to help us bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming. You can also support us a bunch of other ways by heading down to the description box below. Thank you so much, however you end up supporting I Dream of Indie.